We're having the dialogue back and forth between the prosecution and the witness. We are seeing a little bit of the emotion. One thing that I was impressed about was the video when she was in the hospital and they were asking her, did you hear him say anything? Did you say anything? She was very cool and calm even after the injury occurred. What was your thought about that, Lara? I mean, overall, you could see that as a witness. She's keeping her cool. You could see from the movements, from her expressions, that she's about to cry at some point, but then she collects herself. It seems to be her personality. She's somebody who seems to be the calm type, strong personality, able to hold the emotions in. But uh, I agree with you. At some point, and I agree uh, with Mike, at some point, she might start crying, and the jury is going to see that. Even if she doesn't cry, honestly, you could see it on her face. I mean, at, at several points during her testimony on direct, I could see that she would stop, she would clear her throat, but she was just buying. You could tell she was buying time for herself so she could calm herself down. Uh, it's just the type of person she is. But and, and that also, I think, would overall hurt the defendant if he's, it looks like he's going to be arguing self-defense. You know, someone that's cool-headed and calm is not someone who's going to lose control and try to shoot someone or threaten someone. So I don't think that's going to be helpful to the defendant. I agree, Larry. You raised a really good point about the self-defense argument. Mike, I heard a couple of questions in there about the fact you didn't say anything, you didn't do anything, your father didn't say anything, he didn't do anything. Do you think that they are anti